and we are live. Welcome back to Talk It Up. Today's guest, Anthony Vias. How you doing, my brother? Pretty good, man. Glad good, to be man. here. I'm glad you're here. I know we've been talking about this for a while, and we're hanging out a little bit before we started the podcast, and uh, we said the good part would be it's been so long, we're going to have a lot to talk about. Oh, yeah. So been right years. off the bat, I'll ask you about your name because we had talked about that. Um, is, is, was it okay that I introduced you as Anthony? No, yeah, Anthony, and because uh, I mean I have plenty. Everybody calls me different. Anthony, Antonio, Aunt Sally. That is true. That one chick later. But anyway, did you say Sally? That was a different story for <laughs> probably another podcast for that one. But uh, no, I changed. I didn't change my name. So on when Facebook first started, uh -huh. fucking years ago. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's been a while, huh? Yeah, I, MySpace was I the put, original. So MySpace, I was a Anthony, but Facebook, I went to Antonio. Okay. Because I wanted to have, I wanted to see who keeps calling me Anthony and who changes until, oh, here's Antonio now. So did it work? Call him. It did. How long? Like before people just started calling you it's Antonio? automatically after Facebook. You the, know, the people who knew me, like you and Lloyd and all them, they still call me Anthony or Ants, you know? Mm -hmm. Ant has become the nickname of, like, you're real close to me or whatnot. Okay. You know, and if you know me for a long time and you're still close, Anthony. Yeah. But if you don't know me, you call me Antonio. Does it have anything to do with what you're doing with movies? Like, does that play a role in like the different names, characters, personas at all? Or am so, I thinking about it too much? Oh, well, my stage name is Antonio. Okay. Yeah. So if you, in a movie on the credits, it would show up as It'd Antonio, Antonio Vice. Vice. Okay. Is there a reason for that? Do you have a preference? I wanted to have it different than my real name. Yeah. Sounds more uh, Hispanic too. It does. Antonio Vice. Uh, I met a dude in Las Vegas, uh, Jose. He's a good guy. Good dude. Yeah. He, he actually told me, well, before I actually got into sag after. He's the one that told me I should put Antonio Valles instead of my real name because I am light. You know, I have the gift of looking white. <laughs> the gift. <laughs> I'm quite, I got you. I'm light skinned. <laughs> light -skinned. But, uh, so he said, because of that, I should be Antonio Valles. So it could be like, oh, okay. He's got you. One of those things, you know, Hispanics or Latino, whatever they call us. It's now. weird how that's like a, a thing. Like it's, it's, uh, cause I've heard people not even just for like movies and stuff. Right. But doctors want a specific, I sold a car to an Asian couple when I worked at Borman. And their last name was like, it was a Hispanic. Like, and that's not their real last name. They just chose it because they were going to be doctors and they wanted that's to funny. be, um, they wanted people to see their name, like in a phone book or online and be like, all right, I'm going to go to that person. And I don't remember, get it, bro. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, but it was like clearly an Asian couple. And their last name was like Reyes or something. It was like Damn. Dr. Reyes. And uh, he was nice. He ended up telling me like it was for marketing. And I was like, I never thought of that, but that's true. If you live in this area, maybe in the movies, I'm trying to think like, what was his real last name? I couldn't pronounce it if he told me, I bet. <laughs> That's probably why he went Reyes, right? <laughs> and it sounds cooler too. But it's interesting though, yeah. So uh, you, um, I, I, what, me and you did a movie one time, or I was an extra in a movie that you were in is yeah. probably the better way of saying that. I don't want people you, to be like, we, damn, we did, we'll, we did a movie. I did no. a movie with you because you asked me to, and it was <laughs> a cool experience. I remember almost not going because I had some stuff going on, and my girl was like, like, when will you ever get a chance to do something like this again? And I was like, damn it, you're right. I haven't seen Anthony in a while. Like, I should probably go. And it was a blast, man. Before and you ask your question, I want to ask, how was that? I never really got to talk to you The whole experience? About that. It was fun. It was uh, what, and this is probably normal to you, but for anyone who's never done anything in a movie ever, it was way more makeup than, like, the actual filming. Yeah. And a lot more sitting around than actually filming, uh, which is fine. Because mm -hmm. there's a few, when I got there, you were doing scenes, uh, which is perfect because I was doing the makeup part. And then when they had me all zombied up and my brain's falling out and stuff, um, we, it wasn't too long. We got in there, we went over some stuff and then we started filming. We do like, I think we did like 20 some takes like of the same thing over and over. Yeah. Different angles. And well, even some of them were like the same exact angle, a bunch, and then a different angle, a bunch. And then I was like, so it was really, really fun. Um, I do remember though. I don't know. Well, you'll remember this as I tell you, mm. do you remember I kept choking the shit out of you on accident? Yeah. <laughs> I would, it's I, not real, Will. <laughs> it felt real, man, because I was dressed up as a zombie. And I was like, I felt like like I was that guy. I know it sounds weird, but I was like, it, it's a zombie. Like, I'm not saying like I'm like a master at being a zombie. Anyone can do it. But with the makeup on, I felt like I was just so into it. And I remember like every time they'd be like, cut or pause or something. And you'd be like, well, it's not real. Because <laughs> I was like, actually. They said cut. They said cut. <laughs> and I just forgot, man. But I kept thinking like, God, I hope Anthony doesn't think I'm an asshole. Oh, no, no. I thought it was funny as hell. Because, <laughs> right. I mean, it was your first time. And it was fun, man. No, I'm glad that you invited me, man. And I had, I had a lot of fun. And people will ask about it all the time. Like, how did you do that? I'm like, I, I just ran into him. He asked me. I went. I'm like, But it sounds like, how did you guys get extras for that? Do you guys just post stuff places? So, usually you get a, like a casting director that they do that background stuff. Mm -hmm. So, I never had to do that. 
but I think they put they have their own mailing list and they of throw extras? it out of extras. So are these people that just sign up, like call me when you need an extra? Basically, yeah. Really? And there's a lot of actors out there. I'm not trying to throw anybody down or nothing. But there is, yeah. <laughs> but a lot of them are just background actors. Is that what they want to be, though? Some of them, yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah, some of them, they do it for a living. I mean, L.A., New York, they get paid 300 a day. That's a good point. That's not a lot in L.A., though. I could see it in, like, in a different it's place. Not, but if you're, you're here, you're like, oh, my God, 300 a day, that's nice. Sure, yeah. In or LA. Texas, which is close to us. There's not a lot of taxes there and stuff. And mm-hmm. I get it, man. Um, that's pretty crazy. Though. I always wondered how they, they got certain people to do it. Um, how did you get into that, man? Cause you've been doing it for quite some time and you've yeah. been in a bunch of different projects. I know a little bit about it, but just pretend I don't at all. Like how, how do you even get into to being in movie shows? Um, and stuff so like that? how I got into it is probably not how you most people, legit, most people are going to get into it. I just happen to be in the right place at the right time. And that's been my life for the longest. Ever since I, you know, went through my spiritual journey and just became a yes man and positive and all that. Just well, good things. I'm not going to interrupt happening. your story, but I'm going to ask you about the spiritual journey. That's no, cool. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. But yeah, so I. Okay, let me see. The first time I got on set, I was a so I'm, I was a parkour coach and I had my own students, and my students were at NMSU doing like film stuff. I think it's CMI program. Mm-hmm. And they had like short films or whatnot. And they asked me, they were like, hey, do you want to do a backflip or whatever on film? And I was like, sure, you know, I'll do it for you guys. When you say they, like the people at the Yeah, my, university? my students, yeah, yeah. Okay. So for like one of their projects. Yeah, it was just for their like a student project. Gotcha. And then, so I started doing that and I realized, not necessarily realized, but I, I found out what it takes to make a movie, which was, I was like, what the fuck? Really? Like they just from like doing that movie? real quick? Yeah, because they had the whole setup, you know, legit cameras, lighting. So that was your first time, the way I was just describing mine? Yeah, like, that, so was that was my first yours. time. Okay. And I was like, okay, yeah, and a lot of hurry up and wait. Hurry up and wait know. is a good way of putting it, yeah. So it was kind of cool, and I kind of liked that experience. So I started asking, for, hey, you, you need another guy or something? And I just kept going, going, to finally I got called. I was like, hey, what's your rate? I was like, oh, what? I, what did you say? Well, I didn't say anything. My friend got my phone. Uh, Julian Alexander. Shout out to Julian. And he, he, like, negotiated the deal? He was just like, oh, yeah, I got it, blah, 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 boom. And I was like, he's like, now you need an email, you need this, you need that. I was like, That's oh, That's badass, shit. dude. And, and it just took off from there. So for the people that don't know, which most people will, parkour is just jumps, like free running. Is that Yeah, basically parkour? free running, yeah. Okay. And so you were getting hired as stunts, as an actor, as both? Like, how did that go? It was an actor, mm-hmm. but uh, a lot of stunts. Not necessarily what I do now as stunts, mm-hmm. but back then it was like a backflip. Do some parkour over here and there, you know, in the background and shit. Okay. And it just became, you know, what it is now, which is nice. Have you done full blown, like dressing up as someone else to do their stunts? No. So you've never had to like try to look alike someone? I've done, I've doubled twice. Which is what I'm talking about. Is that what it means? Okay. Double? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. No, so I, I don't know the terms. Twice, yeah. Okay. One of them was another student project, uh-huh. but this was later after a few years after I already got into it. I doubled one of the guys for, I think it's called Buffalo. Uh, it was about like the 1800s, the Buffalo mm-hmm. Soldiers and all that. And I just doubled the main guy. I did his stunts and everything. It was pretty cool. What's the craziest stunt that you can remember that you've done? I know you've probably done so many. Well, I don't know. What's crazy I, to you? Jumping off a horse, like building the building. That's crazy. Yeah, that was actually the first stunt I did. Yeah, the jumping off a horse sounds like, and after I said it, I'm like, <laughs> that sounds like. It was like most no, I was on a horse. I got shot with the fake arrow. What about horse to horse? Have you done that? No, I know. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. I'm not into bestiality. <laughs> but... <laughs> But but it would look good on a resume, man. I'm trying to tell you, hey. you get a whole different movie market. <laughs> <laughs> what? So jumping off a building to a different building you've done? Oh, yeah. So maybe you should tell me because I feel like I messed up with the horse thing. What's crazy to you? Because <laughs> you're like, uh, that's not even that What's great. crazy man. to me? Well, okay. I was in the back of a Humvee. Okay. With the AK, uh, AK-47 shooting blanks. And the dude was going 30, 35 on, in the desert in the Nevada, in Las Vegas. It's, it's like East of Las Vegas. Okay. In the mountains. And that was crazy to me because the set wasn't that great and the coordinator wasn't that great. No. So we were not safe. Oh, so you were just worried about things. It's like going to a jacked up carnival. I could have died. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I believe that's that was going to be part of my questions. Because even in a safe set, like I bet, I mean, people still die. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Is that, does you that do ever run through things. your brain or? Always. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. If I feel it in my gut that I don't want to do it, I won't do it. No matter how much you're paying, no matter what you say, even if it's last second, all right, and you're up, and 
something says don't do it, I won't do it. And then how do they treat you if you were to they say They respect that? that. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It sucks, but they respect that. They always make it seem like the movie industry is so ruthless, and I bet there's a probably a, it is. a true part to that. Well, a lot of it is because most dumb people, mm-hmm. yeah, most dumb people are very, uh, what do you call it, hard-headed, ego, ego-driven. And, oh, I like got if this, two stunt so guys good. are hanging out, there's a lot of like a pissing contest? Of, all the time. Okay. And I hate that. Yeah. I, I do not like actors. Well, that doesn't sound like you. So I agree with that. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's a crazy. So what do you do when you're in a place like that? You kind of have to fit in because it's a career. I but then you're kind of no, you. I, you don't care. I don't care. No? I know the people. People know me. If I get work, I get work. If I don't. You're good with that. Yeah. I always worry about that because it's very easy to say you wouldn't, right? Because mm-hmm. people always look at Will Smith and the stuff with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Everyone's always like, if I got famous, like I would, I would give back and I'd be saying, I'm like, I'm sure they thought that too. Like it. It's, it's easy to say that when you're not, but you hand someone a bunch of money or a big role or a certain thing, they kind of lose it a bit. And so I can see how someone in Hollywood um, can, it can change who they are or, or even stunts like, cause you're competing with other stunt people. So if you're really good, you're like, you, you know that and someone else comes around, it's hard to be humble. Mm-hmm. And so I can see that a lot. So if a young kid was on set with you doing stunts, you would help them out. Yeah. It's all about safety. That's my, my number one priority when yeah. I'm on set safety. Does that go with everyone? Like, cause you, you do acting and stunts or how, what's, what's the percentage break? Would you say like so how I much? started with stunts uh-huh. and that's what, you know, got my career going to stunts, mm-hmm. but I really enjoy acting. Mm-hmm. So I do that once in a while. My agent gets me a lot of acting roles, but I don't get them. What does that mean? That just means, I don't know. They just don't want me. What you, he gives you like an audition for it kind of thing. Yeah. I get a lot of auditions, but I feel like that's normal, right? Like even well, true, people yeah. always say like, Hey, like you're going to be told like a lot. Like it only I takes believe one. that yes. is because most people know me as a stunt guy. So, for example, I see some friends um, that I used to go to school with, and they see me now. They're like, oh, it's stunts. And I'm just like, you know, yeah. hire me for acting. You know me. Let's, you know, let's get in. Like, oh, but you're a stunt guy. I like, well, no, I, I act. You know, audition me. Let's go. Mm-hmm. But. I know you as an actor. I, I actually have to remind myself that I rem- Oh, that's right. He did stunts at first. Mm-hmm. Because I, I, that day, you did a good job acting. But then you also did stunts. But for whatever reason in my head, like. If I re- reference you, if I'm talking about you, someone else, I would say actor. Actor. Yeah, I don't see it that way. Is, would it be offensive to either one? Like, is it offensive know. to a stuntman to say actor or actor? Stunt? Like, is someone who does both? To each their own. Yeah? You don't care, though? I really don't care. No. Yeah. I, um, this may be like, not everyone will agree with this, but uh, talking, talking about roles, because you had mentioned like auditioning for stuff. One of my favorite shows of all time is Breaking Bad. I think Aaron Paul did a, like amazing job in that. I love his character. Love him. I've seen him in other stuff since. I'm not sure how good of an actor he is. And I hope no one takes offense to that because I really do like him. But it kind of like exactly what you said. He happened to audition for a very specific role that he specifically was great at. And he killed it. And I couldn't see anyone else playing that. The same way as I couldn't see anyone else playing um, Walt. uh, Brian Cranston did that. Perfect. But then, and then he is a good actor in other stuff. But I've seen Aaron Paul in uh, Westworld um, in season two. Um, Good, not great. I've seen him in some other stuff. I'm like, ah, like. It just, I, he just killed one specific part. And so I can see how, I bet that guy's been in hundreds of auditions mm-hmm. in his life. And he just happened to walk in for one where they were like, that's exactly what we need. Yeah. To where maybe even a better actor just couldn't do that guy. True. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of it could be because you've only seen him. Because you've seen him that way. That's what you see. I think there's a little bit of that. but And also, a lot of people get typecasted. What, what does it mean when someone gets typecasted? For example, if you were to cast me in anything, what would you cast me as? Just by my looks. Uh, Spartan guy and see, it's always, I'm always the bad guy, the evil. I could see you as like a drug lord, maybe with like a trench coat. Yeah, I'm always that like guy. A, yeah, I don't care. I, that's, fuck. Give me some work, you know. I I'll do like that. You, that is true, though. I get what you're saying. Except for that one with well, where you went zombie, they actually cast because uh, my friend actually was producing that, mm-hmm. so he knows that I can act. So he gave me that dramatic role. Was there a bad guy in that movie though? Yeah. Okay. Besides the zombies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I didn't know I didn't see the full thing. Um, okay. I get what you're saying. Yeah. Cause I was like, I don't remember you being a villain in that one, mm. but I can see you playing like a villainy type character. So I get what you're saying. So they only look for you to do that kind of thing. Correct. So that means people that do a variety are kind of just super talented. Is that what it is to get yeah. really like Leonardo? You get some people like that can act. I mean, yeah. they can do anything and that's amazing. I watched today. There's a guy I watch on YouTube named Spencer Cornelia. You ever heard of him? Mm-mm. His whole YouTube channel, and I can link it down below in the video, is he puts people on blast for being frauds. 
And I watched an episode today, like uh, people that pretend to be something they're not, they, and like pretending they own these Lamborghinis, but they really rented them, like That's stuff right. like that. And he calls out this guy that was an actor and he was like a A-list actor. And the whole episode is about him, how he's really fraud. Like he would make these trailers. He never made a movie. He would make these movie trailers that were pretty cool. Right. And he was like, you can tell in it that he wasn't the greatest actor, but the, it looked like cool things mm -hmm. and people would donate money to him. He would never make the movie and he would say he did. And like, he would title the movie something similar to a different movie that won awards. And then uh, Photoshop those awards onto his like movie poster to make yeah. it seem like he won them. And he was doing it. And he would say he would put on there like Al Pacino is going to be in it, like all this stuff. So people wanted to be a part of it. And like, apparently he was frauding people out of millions. They were just donating to him and he would just make these epic trailers and he would never do the movies. What happened to that dude? Uh, I, I'm not at the end. There's a, it's like a, he releases, he's on part two now. So yesterday was part one. Today did part two. So oh, I don't know new. how it ends Okay, yet. okay. Yeah, he does them like uh, every few days, but for whatever reason, this one's been coming out every day. So I don't know what's happened to him yeah. yet. But yeah, he's just like like crazy. stealing some, some money. And he wasn't that good of an actor. Like when you see him, but you, people just, once you throw in like Al Pacino or these guys, you're like, oh, he must be good. I'm going to donate to this guy. Mm -hmm. How no, wild is that, that's, man? That's smart, but illegal. <laughs> Evilly smart. <laughs> yeah, Evilly smart, but illegal. I always talk about that, like how the smartest people in the world are probably in prison. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> yeah, no, all this acting stuff is pretty fun, but nowadays is it's very different because they they look for someone very, very specific. Mm -hmm. Like I need somebody with no arms that's blind. Do you always know what they're looking for, by the way? Or sometimes they don't even tell you, or is it a mixture? No, they they, they my agent always gets what, what what is needed. I got you. So when you go in, it's because your agent feels like you would fit that. Yeah. Okay. Cause I, I feel like, I wonder if there's ever ones where they're like, just bring us like tall buff guys and like, we'll just for stunts, yeah. make them cry or something. So for stunts is different. Cause I get hired out of the coordinator okay. instead of my agent. I got you. Yeah, she's mostly just for acting mm -hmm. and coordinators. They do their own thing. If they know you, it's a little different. They have to know you or you some you know, word of mouth. Like, hey, this guy was good. So someone rep, like referred you somewhere yeah. along the line. Like we're looking so for, I don't know, dude, that's six feet. Long hair can be gay. It's like, oh, and, you know, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty crazy how that works, man. Well, and is it true? Because you're in Albuquerque now, you said? Right now, yeah. Are they, um, I seem like a lot of people are filming here now. Like, oh, is it's, there, it's, what was the reason for that? Mexico's been pretty good. Yeah. But because of, you know, the uh, tax incentives and. What was, is, I hear that a lot. What is it? You get so the film gets back. money back? Yeah. For just filming here? Mm -hmm. What does that do for New Mexico? Well, it gives jobs. Because they hire the people here locally? Do they though? Don't rat anyone out. They do. They don't bring in like a bus full of people, their own people. They, well, they have some of their own people naturally. I'm sure they hire local people. Okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, yeah, they they, they hired a local guy. <laughs> Sometimes they do, but they mostly fly out a lot of fly in actors and stunts and all that. Yeah. But like background is mostly local. So they do get a variety okay. and also a carpenter, or, you know, plumber, whatever they need, paint or whatever they need from there. That's a good point. So a lot of people will come here for like desert scenes, right? Because yeah. of the white sands. Like the one we're filming right now up on Moongate. What can, are, are you able to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. What are you filming right now? Uh, the movie is called Wanted Man, I think. Okay, so you get a movie uh -huh. and you name it something while it's filming. And, and then the, they might it won't even be that when it comes out probably. Right, so it's Wanted Man right now. And then called. who are the people that people would know about that are in it? So the lead actor is Dolph Lundgren. Dolph Lundgren. Because people were taking it. pictures with him. He was somewhere. Yeah, he's just been hanging out. Okay. <laughs> he's he yeah. might be outside right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what, what, do, what do you know about it? The about film? The film? Uh, I think it's just about him. He's a, a cop, crooked cop or whatnot. Mm -hmm. He's in Mexico. So this is Mexico. Gotcha. And some, um, oh, he's, he's sent to extradite a woman, then falls in, I don't remember, something like that. He's like trying to escort someone back somewhere? Something like that. And then leave, so they could both leave back to the U.S. or something. Huh? Yeah. Has it been fun? Yeah, it's been cool. It's Have been windy. Oh, yeah. Is he weird? He's a cool dude. Is no, he he's cool? a cool dude. Yeah. Is he? Is he jacked out of his mind? No. He's not? He didn't seem like he is. No? He's just, he's actually really chill. Really? Yeah. And he's Russian in real life, right? No, he's Swedish. Jesus Christ, this shows how much I know. I just remember <laughs> as the Russian from Rocky. Yeah, everybody does. I didn't even know his name when I got hired on this. They are like, it's, oh, you're going to be with Dolph Lundgren. And I was like, cool. sure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll show him around. Money? Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do I need to like show him the ropes or something? <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool. Anyway, what I was saying earlier, 
since we're shooting up here in Moongate, uh-huh. they're shooting in two houses, but it's just people's houses. So location scouts, which is people that go around looking for a nice location mm-hmm. they can film at, they found these places up there. So I'm not sure exactly how it works, but they pay them out like, hey, we'll give you this much money if we film at your house. And they built them a new fence, a new gate, you know, the whole house, uh, add-ons. So all that that gets built, they get to keep. Oh, really? Which is pretty neat. And then they just film there for however much time and leave? We've been there for about two weeks now. And that's pretty normal, like, to do. So they're doing scenes in the house. It's not just, like, a visual and the stuff. Okay. That's pretty wild. I wonder what houses out there they found uh, interesting. Uh, It looks like you're in Mexico. Oh, okay. That makes (laughs) makes way more sense. In Oregon, I think it's called, right? Uh, well, I know the Moongate area, probably. I never yeah. go that high, but I know exactly where you're talking about. I had a buddy that lived out there for a while. Yeah. Um, and af- I didn't think of the Mexico part, but once you said that, I'm like, oh, that's exactly what it no, looks yeah, like. It looks like there. Mexico. Yeah. yeah. But we've been outside. So it's inside the house and outside. Okay. And it's been windy, dusty. Yes. <laughs> Burnt up. Yeah. That's crazy, man. It's a uh, windy. The last, it's supposed to be windy the rest of the time you're filming yeah. a bit. So what do they do when that happens? When you get inclement weather, do you just film through it? Mm-hmm. Do they well, it, edit it depends out? on the scene. Yeah, because oh, some of it could be inside. Yeah. Would they ever switch an outside day to an inside day? Almost the, definitely, yeah. Oh, okay. And then if it just stays windy the whole time, is that just the well, scene Well, it's now? been windy. We've been filming, so. That's true. And it comes in bursts, too, so it's not like it's always going to mess stuff up, huh? Mm. That's so, so interesting, man. Yeah, we're filming everything outside because of the day. Mm-hmm. And when it gets dark, we go inside and they light it up. like it, look, it, it looks like it's still daylight. Oh, really? Yeah, all the little tricks they can do, man. That's like old lights, man, like 2K or whatever. Oh, do the neighbors ever complain? Oh, no, we haven't got any complaints. No? I think they, they rented out in Mexico. You're, oh, because turn a little bit? Yeah, yeah. get some rotation <laughs> in there. You can get it up closer if you they want. Re- they rented out, I think, one, two, three of the houses in the area. As like... And they're only filming in one. Oh, I see what you're saying. So, just, yeah. so they probably um, have a good little radius. Yeah, we got like home base in one, and then costume stuff in the back, wardrobe and all that. Nice, dude. Yeah, that sounds fun. Even just the one day on set, man. I'm like, I don't even care if I'm that important or get called to do much. It's just cool to kind of be around there. Mm-hmm. We actually recorded a funny little video. Remember when I was typing at the computer? Oh, and you were like, do you, we're all dressed up as zombies. And you had my phone. Oh, yeah. And there's some girl, you're like, do you know where the f- exit is or something? Or like, and then she's like, Rrr. like, and walked off as a zombie. And you're like, what about you to someone else? Or like, no. And then you pan over to me and I'm just like, a zombie, but like <laughs> typing on the computer. And like, do you know? And I was just like, <laughs> I think I still started have typing. Yeah. I think I ran into it somewhere. I don't know if it was on Facebook or like in my phone when I was going through it. Um, but that was pretty funny. If you had to do, um, what would you call it? A double uh, for someone like famous? Who do you think you could pull off? Like, like looks wise. I don't know anybody famous. Yeah. You're not really yeah, I, into the names. I'm huh? a bad actor, stuntman guy. I don't know the names. I don't know movies. That weirdly could be a good thing though. Cause that means you're probably not like too influenced by one person. I had to stop watching some podcasts, man, because I love podcasts and I find myself influenced by them. And I'm like, I would never want anyone to watch mine and be like, you sound a lot like him or you say the things they say, or your type is this way. So I stopped watching them because I would naturally start doing some things. And I'm like, not even on purpose, but so I, that might be a good thing for you. Like maybe you're just you and people like you for you. And if you started getting too much into it, you might be like, all right, I'm going to talk like this guy and have a swagger like this person. That makes person. sense, yeah. It might mess with you. So I just, I don't like actors because there's, it's like when you go to like the cliques, you know, like jocks, whatever, the actors, mm-hmm. they're very full of themselves and they're always talking about themselves and they're very, always trying to do accents and all this bullshit. And fucking, I'm so introverted, dude. I hate people. <laughs> is it, uh, so in what scenario would you end up with a group of actors like hanging out? Like so, on sets or is this like everyone gets together to talk about like different jobs and stuff? Last month we had a read through, so we Which all get is? together with the cast. Okay. Big old table or wherever it's at, but we had a, it was a big table at a at a studio, and we just went through the script, you know, as you, mm-hmm. but you're hanging out there, doing it. As soon as I got there, hanging out, I'm just sitting there, getting drinking some water, had some coffee as well, and they were like, oh, blah blah blah, start doing accents, and then this other girl was actually Russian in the movie, in the TV show, mm-hmm. so she was you know rehearsing. And this other guy's like, oh, you know, I, my, I can do that too and shit. <laughs> and I was like, who cares, dude? No, he's a fight. And then this guy started doing a Russian. And then this girl, they went British. And I was just like, oh, Did it seem like they're like, Give me the pay attention out. to me. No, me. No, pay that's exactly what it is. Really? They're just like, I'm here too. I was like, fuck you. Shut the fuck up. I don't like that in regular life. I would definitely be a terrible it's actor. It's horrible, yeah. man. I don't like I don't, the, the. You uh, wouldn't be a terrible actor. Well, I, I would be terrible in the sense that stuff like that wouldn't 
excite me. Like I would, I would just kind of like exactly what you said. I'd be like, nah, I'm like, oh, I can't be in a room with these I people. I just got there. I went there, did my job. I didn't try to impress anybody. I already got hired. So I feel like people, you know, matter a bit though. Right. So like in a way, I know it seems like you don't really care that much about it, but you like, you kind of have to like, I guess, let me get like, mm-hmm. guess how I think it would be. Like if I was doing acting and I didn't like the uh, type of people that were doing it, kind of like how you said that look at me, I'm better, blah, blah, blah. I wouldn't fit in very well, which means they probably wouldn't like me very well, which means you mentioned earlier, someone will refer you to something like, which means I wouldn't get many of those. Like, and so like, I, oh, I, I get what you mean. No, I you still like gotta be that, nice. So I'm still nice, you know, respectful and all that. Yeah. In my head though, I'm fucking You're talking like, shit about you. Like this motherfucker <laughs> right here. It's a weird thing when people do that, but I bet you run into that a lot in that field. Oh huh? yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially people that went to school for theater and that. They're just about it. I feel like in movies, that's how they, you know, it's funny movies about actors. They're always get portrayed that way. They're kind of assholes that's behind exactly the scenes. That's exactly how they are. Really? Yeah. So have you seen, uh, what's the, God damn it. I forgot the name of it. When with, uh, Leonardo and Brad Pitt, where they're, uh, once upon a time in Hollywood, do you watch anything like that? Is it when he's the other guy? The stuntman. Man? Yeah. And then, uh, apparently in that movie, and I haven't seen the movie, they per- Bruce Lee is portrayed in the movie. Um, cause I guess the, whoever the movie's about did a movie with Bruce Lee. Mm. So the movie about the movie has a guy playing Bruce Lee and Bruce Lee's like an asshole. And when it came out, people got mad at that. And I guess some people came out and they're like, no, that, that's how Bruce Lee was. Like, you guys saw him and you love his. People that don't, <clears throat> they're like, he was an asshole when he was on set. People that don't know him probably like, I'm offended for you. That's true. And that's very true. It's easy to get offended. But every, you're telling me nowadays, <laughs> easy to get offended. dude. I offend people by not saying anything. That's all you got to do now is shut up and you can offend someone. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I had to let that go a little bit. I, I, I always, especially doing the podcast, and it's not like the most popular thing in the world, but as it grew a little bit and people started commenting more, there's some ruthless ones, man, that I'm like, it doesn't matter. I can do everything perfectly on here and there'll be someone that's like. Somebody's going to hate it. I've literally on one, like, you suck. I, I hate your voice. And then like comments later, like I only subscribe because your voice sounds cool. And I'm like, it's Jesus Christ. Like, and then like one of them said worthless. That's all it said. <laughs> worthless. <laughs> and then the next one would be like, amazing. Keep it up. And I'm like, if I wasn't a strong human being and like, I'm pretty solidified as who I am as a person that would mess with me. And I'm like, man, I can't. I and that's good that you are that way because a lot of people are not that way. Oh, they would start and switching. And then you can't please everyone. Right. Exactly. You, you can't end up just making someone else upset. And that's a, that's a, I think a lesson people need to learn. Yeah. You can't please everyone. You can't help everyone. And, yeah. And not everybody wants to be helped. There's another one. Even the people that are asking for it sometimes, like exactly. that's a hard one, huh? It Cause is. people are like, dude, can you help? Have you gotten the buddy? Let me five bucks. Or can you give me a ride somewhere? That's not actually helping them. Like no. you're just enabling them at yeah, that point. Exactly. But that's a hard one. Cause some people are like, well, they need me. I'm like, well, they needed you the last 20 times. And you I showed up. I had to up. let that go a long time. Cause I was the one that I wanted to help everybody. Really? But then. I got put in situations where I couldn't help them. I think God did this, that on purpose. He was like, I'm going to put you in this situation so you, you can't help them. What are you going to do now? That way you know. You're going to be a little bitch? <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to be that person. And if I'm being completely honest, which is why I think, uh, kind of like what you said, maybe I was put in a position later on in life where people came to me. And at first I would help them because I remember what it was like to need help. Mm-hmm. But then I also remembered like, it, I, I was the guy that was like, can you drive me here, please? I really need you. And I would just do it to the next person. Like, hey, man, like, I don't like, like, in, right out of high school. I'm like, hey, I don't have any money. Can you get my drinks? Never got them drinks back or yeah. paid them back. And so later on in life, when I did well, I would do that at first, help people. And then I go, wait a minute. Like, that wasn't really helping me. It just encouraged me to do it more. Like, yeah. why would I do that back? And uh, you can kind of tell when someone's deserving. I have a couple of friends I would give money to in an instant because they would always, I don't have to ask them. They're going to bring it right back. Right. Yeah. I'll cover their drinks because they'll probably cover some of mine one day and it'll be like, it never happened. See, I don't expect anything back. You shouldn't. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But if you, do, that's a rough one though, because I don't expect it. But once someone does it a lot, there'll be a time where I'm like, wait a minute. Like, why am I always helping you out? Well, they'll expect it. Like you'll go out and yeah. they're like, you got this. And that's what gets me. I'm like, wait yeah. a minute. That's I when I say the last no. three times. I'm like, no, I don't. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. So you're right. I don't expect it back, but th- there's certain people I don't even think about it because I already know like it's whatever. They could doing it because you want to. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And I have those people as well. Like in a heartbeat, they ask for something. I was like, cool here. Yeah. I'm not even thinking about it. Yeah. But you, you can kind of tell when someone, at least older, I definitely couldn't when I was younger, I can tell like if someone's genuine or not. And like, it is what it is. Like, but it's hard balancing like different personalities and like the, the kind of folks you meet, but especially in this world. Oh yeah. Especially nowadays, man. Yeah. It's uh yeah. That's what started the whole conversation. I was like, how do we even get on this was like people's comments and stuff. But yeah, I let that go a long time ago. I'm like, and then you see like more famous people that 
go through the same thing. That's how they get like Howard Stern, one of my favorite like talk show guys, does an amazing interview, been around for years. Like he didn't get that way because like he he's resilient. Like people told him he sucked his whole life. People told me he ruled his whole life and he had to balance that out. You know, he just does him and people like him for that. And I can say the same thing about a ton of other people. You can choose but, whatever. I like this comment. I like this. I fuck this comment. You know, yeah. take the ones you want. Yeah, exactly. Or don't look at them at all. Like, just be just honest. If one. you're the guy or girl that just knows that those things hurt you, then why are you looking at them? Like, you got to kind of know your own limits and, and uh, build yourself and life off that. Uh, what do you think, man? Because we went to high school together. I know you for a long time. And uh, I don't want to say success because we're still young enough that we don't know where we're going to end up. True. But more successful than some of the people we went to school with, right? I look back at some, and I'm not burning anyone, but we know some of the same people, some of the different people that that uh, didn't do so well, man. What do you think was different? Like, what do you think happened in your life or where you went where um, it allowed you to have a good work ethic and to want to do some of the things that you're doing? So for me, you know, I can't speak for everybody else, but I never had any idols. I didn't look up to people growing up. I only had people that I didn't want to be like. So I think mm. that that difference there made it so, okay, what did they do? I do not want to do that shit. Yeah. So I went a different path. And my, you know, I grew up poor, you know. Um, we moved around a lot, not because, oh, travel or military. No, we couldn't pay our rent. There so we go. had to leave in the really fucking that. night and yep. shit. Yeah. But uh, I didn't want that for my kids, for anything. I wanted to change that, that lineage. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, after my kids, grandkids, it's going to be different for them. Yeah. They're not going to go through what I went. My parents, my grandparents, no. I really wanted to change that. Mm-hmm. And because I did have a lot of patience and I just been motivated by being successful just in general. And yeah. I wanted to be something. Not necessarily a celebrity or recognized. Because I actually hate being recognized. Fucking I don't know why. I just I can't take a weird? compliment. I can see that though. I think I would feel weird too. I can take a little bit of it, but I think I get what you're saying. Like overly, you're like, oh, I just yeah, I just like, dude, I to... can't take compliment. I can't, if I do something good, I'm like, oh, who did this? I'd be like, oh, it was him. Yeah. Boom. I'm just done. give him the credit. Yeah, you're yeah. good. I just don't like that. I like behind the scene, being behind the scenes. Well, that's pretty rare though. That's pretty cool that you do that. So that was your whole thing was just like, I want to be not, I want to be famous. I just want to be better and set my future lineage up to continue that same path. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a rough life, man. Cause I lived uh, in the same neighborhood as you at one point and, and uh, worse neighborhoods when I was younger, as I'm <laughs> sure you did. And it's uh that's kind of exactly what it was for me too. I just didn't want to, uh, it's kind of, I like that you said, like I knew exactly what not to be cause I grew up in foster care and uh, that's exactly what my biological parents gave me. They didn't give me a lot of love or anything like that, but they did give me a really good blueprint on what not to be. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, I'm going to, I'm just going to not do that. And then from there, like I, I got a little bit more ambitious, but it's a, uh, yeah, it's a cool thing that you want to be able to leave something behind different than what you grew up with, but it's a hard thing because you want to, and I don't have any kids, but I always think about this. Like, how do you teach a kid discipline and to want something and to work for it, but also give them the things you didn't have? Like, that's a really fine balance. And I'm not sure how to pull that off. You give them what they didn't have, but that you make them work for it in a sense, you know, but give but- me an example though. Like, how would you do that? I don't exactly know. I mean, my girl been talking about this too. Yeah. Cause she's going to spoil him. And I said, no. <laughs> and that's a hard thing it because is. it's like most people do want to spoil their kids. It's a weird balance. I think is that, yeah, I want to spoil them and give them everything I didn't have, but I want them to know why I'm doing it mm-hmm. instead of just having it or them expecting it. It's more like a, they're going to have a job in a sense like, okay, you did this and you earned this, mm-hmm. you know, that's why you're getting this. See all this millions? That's not yours. It's mine. Yeah. You know, it, I, I see it's You'll get broken stuff. off appropriately yeah. based off the things you earn. I, I like to think that I'd be the same way, but it's hard because I, I'm soft. My girl's super soft, by the way. Like, she's the type of person that would, in a good way, want to give our children everything. Oh, that's how my girl and is. It, and so it's like, I love that. But then at the same time, it's like, I know I got the way that I am because I had nothing, right? And I'm not saying to give them nothing either. Mm-hmm. So that's the struggle. I'm like, there's got to be some balance where like, Maybe their basic needs, they'll have more than just their basic needs. They won't just have food. They'll have food they enjoy. They won't just have clothes. They'll have clothes they feel good in. But, like, there will also be, like, if you want a car, you don't just get one. Like, you got to do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. And maybe your first car sucks. And then you have to save up in order. And then we'll cover the other half or something mm-hmm. to get the new one. Like, I want to do something like that. But I don't even know if that would work. One thing I want to give my kids is something I didn't have growing up uh-huh. is knowledge. Knowledge you, and What education. do you mean that you didn't have knowledge, Joe? Like, my parents basic- didn't teach me shit. 
Like what though? Like uh, in general, anything. is there something that you wish that you would have learned or missed out on and you had to learn later on in life? Oh yeah. Later on in life, I learned about credit cards, credit. Oh, work. I didn't learn that either. Yeah. I didn't know any of that. Uh, and they didn't teach them the in school. They don't know. Yeah. I mean, Florida's doing that now. Are That's really? good. Yeah. They're, you have to take a financial class. Yeah. They should in do order that to everywhere. graduate. See, I didn't have any of that. I mean, the skills that we did learn is uh, my dad and my uncle were mechanics. So Which I know a good one. I yeah. know how to fix a car, you know, how to, how to fix the door because we couldn't pay for it. So, you know, at plumbing. Also I not taught in that. school, by the way. You would yeah. think, I'm not talking about teach kids how to be plumbers, right? But basic, like fixing a tire, changing a tire. Yeah, They exactly. should teach that in school. They should teach like how to like screw something in. Like basic stuff. So when things break around your house one day, you have a basic idea of where to start. This is a breaker. This yes. is how it works. No one told, I recently, I still don't always know, man. I go to mine and I call someone. I'm like, it's, what is it? The one going the opposite way? Like, yes, that's the so one. So growing up, I didn't, nobody taught me that. Yeah. But I would see that. So I'm, I'm just happy that I was able to, as a young child, view everything differently than most people. I asked too many questions. I just asked a lot of questions. Probably a like, good why thing. and how? And people got annoyed. And when they, whenever they wouldn't, they didn't want to say anything, I would watch and be like, oh, that's how you fix that. Boom. So you're very observant. Yeah. Yeah. Which is good. I feel like I was the same way as a kid. I, I know you can't tell now, but I was very quiet when I was a kid. And for that reason, because I know I'm a little, everyone now is like, shut up, Will. You talk like the day you were born, I bet. Um, I was really quiet because I didn't always feel heard. I didn't have a lot of confidence, but I would, I would watch people and figure things out. Because I was so quiet, it allowed me to be very observant. Exactly. Um, so I caught on to a lot of stuff that people didn't. People talk too much. They don't say anything. Well, they forget like to, to listen. They're already like, like sometimes even in conversations like this, I can notice the guest is already thinking like what they're going to say back, which is normal. But a really good one is just kind of responding to the other one. Yeah, like, natural response. Quick. Yeah. Because it's, you want to interpret live the information because that might change your response. Yeah, and true. I can tell sometimes I'll say a lot and then someone will say something. I'm like, I just addressed that, man. Like you, you weren't clearly even listening. Really, and then that can't be that rude. But in my head, I'm like, oh, this guy's not listening. Yeah, I was told you talk too much, you won't be able to listen. Yeah. But if you think too much, you also won't be able to listen or do anything. That's true. Because you can get in your own head, which yeah. is essentially just internal talking, right? You're still talking. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, that's a tough one, man. What do you do? Are you spiritual at all? Religious? I am very spiritual. Yeah. Okay. And you mentioned a spiritual journey earlier. And so I want to ask you about that, but for my mental health, I'm not religious at all. Um, I respect, and I'm interested in almost every single one, mm -hmm. um, which because I'm not religious allows me to do that. Like I, I can take a genuine interest in almost anyone because I'm not biased because mm -hmm. I don't have a solid belief spiritually. I'm not too spiritual, but I do believe in like getting like, there's certain things we can do as human beings to help our mind get to a certain place. Um, so I really like to do the float tanks. Uh, and nice. me and Lloyd went to do, I took Lloyd to do his first one in Rio Dosa. You fit? Surprisingly. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a, they had to a tape big two one. together. Oh, no. okay, makes <laughs> sense, <yeah. laughs> Shout out to Lloyd. I haven't seen him in years either. I told him we might bring him up. Um, <laughs> But I like to do that. I took him to do his first one. It's not for everyone, um, but I, I really think that it's it allows me to really kind of what we're talking about, the internal uh, dialogue. It allows me to like kind of get over that real quick. Have you ever done one of those? Yeah, I have. Do I like really it? enjoy them. Yeah. Okay. But I do meditation. I meditate a lot. So, so yeah. Talk to you about your, to, your spiritual journey you're talking about earlier. So if you were to pinpoint it and give it a religion, it's called the metaphysical spirituality. Okay. So it's legit a religion. That you can be, you know, it can be used as religion. Uh, I practice your meditation. There's a lot of things that it's from Buddhism and mm -hmm. just many different other lifestyles that come together into one. Like I said, uh, crystals, meditation. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a little hard to explain. It's okay. I think you're doing a good job. And so what, what would be the goal behind it is just to find Oneness. peace. Find, find peace within Oneness. yourself. It's, and, a, it's um, about, I'm sorry, uh, natural, being natural. I don't take any medicine. I don't do anything. Even if you're sick? Not even if I'm sick. So what would you do if you're sick? I do all natural stuff. So uh, herbs, okay. flowers, oils. I do all that. I've been, have you seen The Witcher? Uh, yeah, I love that Dude, show. I love The Witcher. I love it. I Finally, see, something we both watch. <laughs> <laughs> you could be that guy's uh, stunt to, double. Oh, yeah, I can I see that. The, if I was in, the, in Europe or UK, whatever. Is that where they film it? Anyways, what were we going to ask about it? Yeah, I so, love that show. I used to play that since 2015 when it I came out. I never played the game, so I only know what's in the show. Okay, yeah. And before that, it's uh, the games, the books. Mm -hmm. And because of that, it's very similar. You know, like the potions that actually like, heal you or do mm -hmm. this. That's actually real. You can find different roots, different mushrooms, um, different oils that you mix together. You brew it as a tea mm -hmm. <clears throat> and as a chemical response in your body to heal or to sleep. 
to, if you have a headache, you know, boom, some ginger, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So I do that naturally because a lot of these medicines out there, I don't know, people can take medicines, do whatever you want. I just don't do it because there's things in there that cause something else or almost always. Like if you see any of the commercials, it could cause your regular bleeding, (laughs) bloody headaches, like uh, your parents, you might kill your family. And like all of this is like to cure like an itchy thumb. And you're like, what do you, so I know, I think a lot of people are starting to realize like modern medicine, which is great. If there's a, if there's something you can do without taking, especially antibiotics, like jack up your stomach. And uh, that's almost always the better way to go. I will only take something like antibiotics or go to the doctor if I'm literally about to die. Yeah. So it'd be like a last resort for you. It's literally I'm about to die. Like, oh, and got two minutes. We got to go, you know, then I'll do that. So how do you even learn about this stuff? Or like, there's a lot of books out there. Do you know people that like help you out with that? Or do you just do all your own research? So personally? Yes. I know a couple of people and they're very amazing people and they've helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. But throughout my life journey, cause I've been to now 14 different countries. And oh, wow. Yeah, dude. It's once I started writing what I want, yeah. And actually, you know, meditating and being, being in that moment, writing everything down, burning it and just letting it go. I got so many things out of that. Yeah. Started making money, started doing jobs, travel the world. I was like, damn, this shit actually works, which is amazing. But you yeah. just can't be nagging at it. How I explain that is like, if you're gonna, let's say you order something on Amazon mm-hmm. and then you order it and you're like, okay, it should be here in five days or whatever. Oh, I, I changed the date. Oh, I got to change it. You just keep looking, keep buying. So it's going to keep yeah. getting, it's never going to get to you because you keep ordering it again or, oh, change the date or, oh, it should be faster. Oh, it's backed up. And then you're just staring at the updates. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's very similar to that. So that's an interesting way of looking at it though. Yeah. But through all those travels, I met a lot of people that taught me a lot of things. Yeah. I always feel that I'm at the, I'm in the right place at the right time. Yeah. So you met some characters, I'm have, sure, along oh, the yeah. way. And I mean that in a good way. I'm not mm. saying. I love when I meet someone that I have no idea about. I'm very intrigued. I'll totally like ghost people I came with. Like if I, not even on purpose, but like if I don't know something or someone's very intriguing, very different, like I'll kind of get lost in that and I'll forget, which is a bad thing. I shouldn't be forgetting about my friends or the people I came with, but it's a good thing for knowledge. Cause I'll get totally lost in that. And I just yeah, think it's super you interesting. You learn different things that you wouldn't have known. Yeah. And because of that, I, of course I did a lot of my own research as well. Yeah. So you know, herbs, medicines. I do a lot for my immunity. I do a lot of mushrooms. So, Not like shrooms to go hallucinate. Those yeah. are good too. But it's a <laughs> bunch of different ones that you, it's an oil, alcohol uh-huh. based oil. And it just goes into your system, causes chemical reaction, your immunity boosts up. So how do you even get all these oils? You can buy them at the stores, dude. Really? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I always see a bunch of them. I've seen a mushroom oil at like a natural grocers. Yeah. Like chaga and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I just, I don't know too much about it, um, but it's that. They say, because you were talking about mushroom mushrooms, um, I have a buddy that's really into a lot of that stuff. And he was telling me that there's a lot of studies that show that psilocybin can help literally reactivate dead brain cells. So they have people over, because they do this a lot overseas. And I'm not, I don't know everything that he said, so I could be misquoting this. But essentially he was saying they used uh, psilocybin to um, almost almost 100% cure someone of Alzheimer's. Cause their brain cells were going out. They're losing their memory, their ability to say certain words a certain mm-hmm. way. And they started eating these mushrooms and it literally ignited these brain cells that were nice. dead and, and her memory came back and she was speaking better. And that's crazy, huh? That's cool. Yeah. See, yeah. I believe that whatever you think is going to happen. You are what you think. You are what you eat. Yeah. You know, apple, you know, whatever. I'm an apple. You're an apple. I feel like an apple <laughs> right <a> now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, that's how I feel. You know, whatever you think happens, but it's different for everybody else mm-hmm. because you might not think so like, Oh, that's bullshit. It is bullshit because that's what you think. To me, I don't think it's bullshit. It's just, it's different to explain because you have to be able to experience it. I get the mentality part and I'm not that way. So I respectfully feel something different, but I get that. I think that's a good, like, I think people in prison that are religious, that you need something, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And so I res- I would never tell anyone, like, I don't care. Like if that's what keeps you going, you need that, do that. Yeah. It's, if it teaches you to be a better person, there's tons of people in the world that use religious for ba- religion for bad things, right? True. So I'm saying, like, I don't care what it is. If it's helping you, then I totally respect mm-hmm. it and think you should keep doing it. Um, it I have specific times in my life, because I grew up Christian. I went to a church, um, and I remember, I'll give you this short story, because I think I've told this on a podcast before. But, dude, I, I grew up in a bad home, abusive home, and I used to just pray that, like, Jesus or someone would come get me out of this home. 
And I would for years, bro. And it would, it would mess with me, dude. I would get so depressed and I would like, don't, but don't worry. Well, like, you're just going to put this into a thought that movie, the secret came out and I'm like, I'm just going to focus on getting out of here. And then nothing happened. Uh, it was Did just you ever bad. get out? I got out one day when I stopped watching that. And, and again, I told you earlier that because I don't belong to one thing, I can really listen to things. So I, mm-hmm. I asked you because I genuinely want to know, but I'm just telling you my experience. Yeah. Maybe it's that, but I did get out. But I remember thinking one day, like, I got to make some moves here. And I just figured out things. They, I got out. They took me right back. It wasn't easy. I, I remember telling them to take me to jail one time. I'm like, I'd rather go to jail than back to that house. And it took a while. I got out. A lot of the people that I trusted as a young kid that would take me to church were like turned out to be bad people. And so I just, as a young kid, my brain figured out, like, I got a really bad uh, uh, experience about individuals in my childhood that would rely on religion or spirituality. So clearly I'm biased. Mm-hmm. And I grew up thinking like, all right, well, those people ended up crazy. So I don't even want to belong like to something like that. Yeah. Or, and then as I grew up, I understand that's not true. It just, now I'm already so far out of it that I just kind of like am the way I am. No, and it's good that you're able to see that. There's yeah. so many people out there that I would, I never tell people these things. Yeah. Because then they look at me like I'm crazy. Well, they're going to judge you and then you're going to judge them or they don't know if you're going to judge them yeah. back. And they expect me to judge them back. And they're like, yeah. well, I think you're stupid and this is dumb. And I'm like, cool, you know, to each their own. Yeah. Don't work for you, but it works for me. So I, I don't think it's dumb it. at all. I think it's very interesting. I think anyone that comes in here and talks about something that works for them, if that's the reason they're still doing. Now, if you came here telling about some stuff, but then you're also complaining about your health <laughs> and like, oh, like no one likes me. People won't book me. I have no job. I make Girls health potions, me. but I'm sick. I would you then know? go, all right, you're out of your goddamn mind. But you're telling me about stuff that you believe in and it makes sense. Like if, if you're, you're clearly doing better in your life. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And if you ever get to a place where you're not doing so well, switch some things up. Yeah. It's no, for real. One thing here and there and just until it works. I don't mind that at all. I highly respect that. I have an issue with people that will just continuously complain about life or where they're at with no changes. It's negativity, man. And it's, they're just in a circle too. And it almost feels good to them, I think. What do you think that is? Like, it's drama. People feed off of emotional drama. Yeah. Because once, think about it. Think about why you, people watch TV shows, drama. Some shit happens. To it. Exactly. Yeah. That is but, true. But if there was a show of nothing and everybody's peaceful and happy, it'd be boring as fuck. I wouldn't watch it. And pe- exactly. Yeah. And people are so used to this. Um, there's a word for it. I'm not good at words. <laughs> no, you're good. <clears throat> I'm, I'll keep talking about fucking, it. Yeah. No, people, people are so used to being, you know, emotional, mm-hmm. depressed, sad. Then when they don't have that, it's like, oh, I miss it. Oh, I need that. Cause that's how I feed. Mm, but that's they, a good way of looking they at it. don't need it. But since they're used to that, that's just what they have like to where they're do. comfortable. Yeah. Like a, a lot of people or girls that have abusive guys, mm-hmm. they keep coming back because that's what they're used to. That makes a lot of sense. Maybe again, because I'm not wired that way. I have a hard time seeing things that way. Um, but with me personally, it's always the other way around. I actually like movies and shows that are crazy dramatic because it allows me to not be that in my life. Like, and I get but my you think differently though. See, you're that, yeah. knowing you, you are more open-minded than most people. And I also know boundaries very well. Like, I'm not like, I'm not going to watch Superman and go jump off a building. Like, I'm going to get back to my regular life. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, but there's some people that don't separate and they're literally like, uh, cause that's like, that would used to be a cliche. Remember back in the day, like if you played video games, you were a loser. Yeah. I'm a loser. Now these video games, games are making millions. millions. Yeah. Like if you, I, I used to read the flash comic books. I watched the Spider-Man a lot, the cartoons when I was a kid. And it was always told like you, my grandparents and parents would be like, you can't, Watch TV your whole life. It's going to rot your brain. That's all we do now. And so it's like. Phones like this. Yes. And like. Life get close to the TV. <laughs> old people are doing it now. Like. And so it's like. It's just weird how that changed. But I was always good at separating the two. Because I knew. Um, and, and some people aren't. And I watch a lot of stories about people that get too wrapped up in either video games or movies. And they just don't get a job. Or they don't also have an ambition. Control. See, they don't have control. And balance too, right? Yeah. Like knowing when, how much of this can exactly. I do? Like yeah. I play video games. You know, I do all that shit. But I know my limits. Mm-hmm. You know, I know coffee's not really good for you, but I love coffee. But, Delicious. But I have, my, I have my limits, you know? Yeah. I go days without drinking it, then I'll go back again. I give myself an hour to two hours for video games. Mm-hmm. At night. If I'm home all day, I'm not going to play games. I, mm-hmm. have, I play at night, you know? You have to have boundaries for yourself. That is true. Cause you have to, and I get sucked up in it. Just like most people, I, I it's played a to. game like two days in a row. Like, Oh my God, I did nothing. I skipped the gym. I <sighs> ate bad. Like I hate myself. I'll literally do that. But it, like, not literally I hate myself, but I'll literally call myself out. I'm like, you piece of shit. You gotta go to the gym, dude. Yeah. Go to the gym. You're not allowed to play games for 
48 hours now. Me and my girl go this. to the gym. She wakes up at 5. I wake up at 5.30. Mm-hmm. And we leave at 5.30, 5.35 to go to the gym every day. You guys work out together? Yeah. Well, we go to the gym together. We have yeah. our own different workouts. Okay. I tried. Me and my girl went to the gym a few times. Um, it's, it's different. I was going to ask you about that because we did work. I thought I was doing great, but there's sometimes I think where maybe I push her too hard or that's what it is. It's like, um, at first that's how it was with my girl. And I talked to her cause we're, we have so much communication. I love, I love her by the way. Yeah. Like the way we by communicate, the way. by the way, shout in out Liz. you're watching sweetie. <laughs> shout out have to nothing Liz. but love and joy. <laughs> but yeah, no. So she told me that she would get mad at me because well, it's different. If it was some other dude, be like, oh, you should do this, you know, and she's like, oh, okay, you know, you're a personal trainer. Yeah. Cool. But if it's me, like, it's you. Shut up. Stop doing that. Okay. You know, it's different because yeah. the way you care about people is different. So she was telling me that also boyfriend of hers, ex, a long time ago, would get mad if she would lift more than him or whatever. Oh, uh, okay. If, or be like, oh, you can't deadlift 350. You're a piece of shit. And she'd be like, fuck. So, so then she would have to work out less hard yeah. just to help his ego a yeah. little bit. So it was yeah. different when I, were, when I was working out. Cool, okay, another one. My bad. I'm, I'm like so many thoughts now. Like, oh, shit, shit, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing that she told me is that the way I work out is so different than hers. She makes a goal and she hits the goal. Mm-hmm. Boom. Oh, I felt good. That was great. Me, I have one goal when I work out that I never, never accomplish. Yeah. And that's kill yourself. So she was like, see, I can't get that concept. And that was the difference. She works out to feel good. And I accomplished this, did this. Awesome. I go to work out like, okay, I'm going to try to kill myself somehow. I'm going to lift this, list this, boom, boom. But that works for you. It works, it, but it, it works for you me. Hard. You know, it's not for everybody. Yeah. It's like I'm on the bench, uh, 305 or whatever. Mm. I'm going to hit 10. I hit three. And I'm like, boom, I hit three. Yeah. You know, and she's like, but you didn't reach your goal. I was like, yeah, but I did three. You know, next time I'll do four. Yeah. And then keep going. Like if my goal is three, maybe I hit two or one. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I, I get what you're saying. I, some people need like mini successes. Mm-hmm. Like they, they can't do that. I'm the same way, by the way. Like I'm always like, sometimes I'll achieve my goal and then I need a new one right away. Mm-hmm. Like I don't celebrate that really. Uh, but some people need, um, cause I work in mental health right now. So I help people in recovery from drugs, alcohol, either they're in rehab or considering it. And they need small successes because otherwise, if, especially if you throw in like mental health mixed in with substance use, like that's just a really messy situation there. And if you don't have small successes, you'll, you'll jump into like a deep depression. Oh, right you're away. right. It's cause it's different levels of emotional intelligence. Yes. You know? I went through that. I had to give myself little goals and when I'd accomplish them, I'd be happy about mm-hmm. myself and it was, it would change my day, give myself little goals and then eventually I get bigger goals. And then, you know, I've accomplished, feels good. Your body's different. You gain confidence. Mm-hmm. But now I'm to the point where I don't even need that because I'm so like tuned, tuned into myself and I know who I am Yeah, and that I don't need a goal to hit, to be good because I'm already happy. So and, I know what you mean. And you're very adaptive, right? Cause, mm-hmm. and you said that earlier, like, it's like this, that's what it took for you to do it then. And now you moved on to this now and there'll probably yeah. be some other version of you later. True. Yeah. But people just um, are afraid of change too. That's why people can't do it. Yeah. Yeah. It, we're, we're creatures of habit. And so unless you challenge yourself to change some of those habits up, like you don't really experience much people that don't travel. That's the one thing I would tell everyone. Like everyone's always like, and I get you need money to travel. Um, I want to be successful. I want to have money. I want to have a nice house. I want to have cars and clothes. I would say just travel more. Like if, you, if that's the one thing I can tell people, because every time, and I haven't traveled a whole lot. I've traveled more than some of my friends, a lot of the people that I know. And you know, you've traveled way more than me. Mm-hmm. Like it's so eye opening to see the world through these different lenses and to understand like went to Mexico for the wedding and it's like this crazy like wedding and it's like we're on this, Place, but then you like drive down the street and you got people living on the side of the road, yeah. sleeping as their with their dog as their pillow and like 20 people in the back of a truck. And it's like, man, like we all wanted to come here. We don't realize like we're in a small little circle here, but this world is very different than ours. And then you start understanding the humbleness of the people that work there and God, man. And I can imagine how I've never traveled off this continent. Like, but I can imagine like th- that anyways, long story short, I would tell people travel more. Because you get way more insight. I think you really grow as a person when you, when you see what, yeah. what's out you there. You got to give yourself gifts in a sense. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like you said, yeah, I want to travel, but it takes money. Figure out a way to travel. You know? Yeah. I, I got paid to travel. So I didn't even have to pay for anything. Because That's I, true. There's I always something. Yeah, I didn't have the money to travel, but I wanted to travel. So I was like, how can I do all this traveling without having to fucking pay? Mm-hmm. I don't know where I get this gig. Oh, you're going to be traveling the world now. Like, boom. There you go. You know? But I was open to it. 
I didn't close off like, oh, that's stupid. What are you doing at? No. Yeah. I want to be close always, to my family. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what family? <laughs> but either way, it's like you, um, you're not going anywhere. Like, even if you go away for like six months on a thing, you could come back. Like I, people always just, it's excuses. I think sometimes it they'll, is, they'll say what's easy and, um, what it's a, uh, birds can fly. They have wings. They can fly anywhere in the world. Why are they just there all the time? Yeah. Like the same with us. Yeah. You can do whatever the fuck you want. There's always something you can do. No matter if you have no money or no family or nothing. There's always a way. Yeah, and you, you proved that perfectly, man. Like being, I, I came from nothing, dude. I came from you really did, poverty. Man. Yeah. Nothing. No it's shit. But I didn't want to be that way. I was mm. open to something else. And I decided to leave. You know what? I don't need those cruises. I left. Yeah. And fucking just one suitcase. I went to Vegas. And then from there, I got it. I went to a parkour gym doing parkour. Dude's like, hey, I'm actually... I put in my two weeks. You're really good at parkour. Do you want a job? And I was like, yeah. He was offering like you his old job? Literally. That's and that's how ass. I got that parkour uh, job at HKPK in Las Vegas. And from there, the owner's a stunt coordinator. So he was throwing us to different gigs. And I was like, what the fuck? okay, I'm just going to go. Mm-hmm. But it was, the idea was open, you know? And I wasn't holding on to it. Like, I really want it. No, I was like, it would be nice if I had this. You know what? I want this. Boom. Forget about it. Leave your life. Yeah. And it just kept happening and happening. That's crazy that that one move led to the next move. Do you remember like l- with your one bag, like your, do you remember what your mind, your, your thought process was when you were just taking out the video? Yeah, I were just said, out? not really. It was more like, you know what? If I want to accomplish something bigger, I need to go to a bigger place. Yeah. Cause this is bigger than me where I want to be. Mm-hmm. And right here I ain't getting shit. Yeah. And nobody's getting shit. All I hear was complaining of people are always saying, I want this or I should do this. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do what you want to do, but yeah. I'm actually going to do it instead of just talk about it. And then it inspires people to do it too. Right. So it's, and yeah, yeah. And I hope I did. I hope I inspired many people. Yeah. It's a hard thing to do that, man. I, I that was, I never had that thought. That's not true. I remember times where I thought about moving away, but um, I always think it's awesome when people do leave like yourself. I have a couple other friends that did will Allen mm-hmm. um, other people that just go off, did stuff and then come back and visit. I would much rather you do that than to like see you do bad here. Right. I, I'd prefer if you did good here as well too. Right. Mm. But if those were the options, like I'd rather you go off and try something, come back and visit. I'll see you when you're in town, man. Like I don't need yeah. to see you every single day. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like and we're kind of, fr- we're the friend kind of friends that like, you don't have to be like always texting and all. Fucking yeah. Aaron Lloyd, you, like, I don't, we yeah. don't talk for a year or two. And it's like, like, like yo, an, I'm in town. Cool. It's like you didn't even out. go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Those a, are, it's a cool stuff. And you can't replace history like that. We'll always, wherever anyone goes in our lives, like we'll always remember the high school days, the growing up poor days, the crazy party days, the getting into trouble days. It's like experiences, man. Yeah. You All that shit is. So when we're old, fuck in the back in the pit in the fire, we just yeah talk about the old days. Like, yeah, is, remember man. when we were poor? <laughs> yeah. I don't want, I, I hope that I've lived enough when I'm old that I have stories for days, man. I want to be one of those old guys that say stuff. You're like, get out of here, grandpa. Like you did what? Like, <laughs> yes. That's who I want to be. Yeah. Like, I don't want to like just sit there. I'm and, still traveling. Like, Oh, your grandpa's coming in. Yeah. <laughs> Gra- be nice grandpa's to him. Uh, skydiving in today. So we're going to go pick <laughs> him up. Yeah, dude. It's going to be, it's going to be great. I know it. Yeah. That's badass, man. No, I'm glad that you're able to come down. And I always, uh, um, I like, I, I'll tell people about you or my, like my girl, have you met Laura before? Yeah. Oh, I remember. Like, yeah, she remembered Facebook you. Facebook friends and everything. Yeah. yeah. But I was like, I can't remember like when you guys were introduced and stuff. And but I think we hung out a few times at a few places Yeah. Or, like, and there's a couple, I think a couple times we ran into you somewhere. Um, but, um, it's always cool when that happens because I, we, we've been together going on nine years, going on 10 and we got married and stuff. So she always <laughs> knows all these people in my life and she has like pieced together who was when and where and how and. So whenever I tell her you're coming here, like, oh, is he the guy from here or this story or that story? I'm like, no, he's that story. And then this one. But it's always fun to just see where people ended up in life and uh, to re-catch up, man. Because it's, uh, yeah, no, it's a crazy world it's out there. It's good to see where people is at, you know. Yeah. Especially from high school or the people we used to know. I do, I don't talk to everybody. Mm-hmm. But I do like to keep tabs. Like, I look at them, you know, Facebook yeah. or whatever. What are they doing now? Some of them aren't doing good. I'm like, fuck, you know. They still they have five kids now or something, but they hate themselves. And That's a just, rough one, man. And we live in this world where we know that now because of social media. Like you, yeah. you kind of know how someone is. Yeah. Like just because they can't stop posting about it. No, There's exactly. some times where I'll see people in public and I'm like, I know them. And I've actually never met them. Just people end up on my social media somehow or someone got added, whatever. 
And I'm like, no, I don't know. I'm trying to remember where I know them from. And then I go, wait, I'm, I don't actually know this person. I just see them post all the time. Like I've never met them in person, but I'll recognize them in public. And I'm like, that's the person from the place. And it's so weird that we live in a world where that's a thing. Yeah. Like back in the day, like you, it's exhausting, bro. Like you'd have to go find someone like somewhere. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Damn. You would just have like a meetup spot and just hope they show up. Like they're, they're, it, it's so crazy, man. I even watch these old shows like Yellowstone. I get into not Yellowstone. What's the, you don't know shows. I don't know why I talk to you about shows. They made a prequel that's back like in the cowboy days. Mm. It's essentially about uh, 1883 is what it's called. And it's about the road on the Oregon trail. And it's like, they're not even to Oregon yet. Like it's like all this stuff has happened. People die from like a snake bite, like on the way there. And like that person's just dead. It's like funny. nowadays you just go to the hospital. You'd be fine. Like you probably get PTO. You know what I mean? You drive. It's, <laughs> <laughs> And so when I watch it, I'm like, holy crap. Like just living back then must've been wild. Like you just never know, like you can get a cut from a screw and like, there's a good chance you Infected might get tetanus or something. You're yeah. Dead. yeah. You're just done. There's not cure for, for like basic stuff. So Ooh. we live in a, a world. I'm um, learning about all these herbs and uh, natural stuff. There's actually cures for almost everything. Do you think they had stuff back then that we don't know about? Oh, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. A lot of the stuff I take for vitality, um, testosterone and all that stuff. It actually, it makes me feel better, mm -hmm. but it's literally all natural roots and flowers. Really? And I do my own research on all the ingredients. And a lot of them are from the ancient days. So they have like a big history. It's not just yeah. something you made up. There's no. like a history of oh, this thing a, used. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a lot of it's like, well, it used to be used for like Tangar Ali is a root and then a plant, uh, the flower. And it's, it used to be used for vitality. The only the warriors would take it because it would make them be stronger. Mm -hmm. And come to think of it nowadays, like, oh, because it boosts your testosterone, it does this and does that. Maybe FDA doesn't approve it, but it's like, but I take that shit. And even, even if only it only happens because I believe it. Yeah. Shit's happening. It's crazy what the FDA will not approve. So like uh, <laughs> there's some, we talked about the, the psilocybin for the brain stuff and then stem cells, like for whatever reason are approved for like research here, but they don't use them. So guys like Joe Rogan and other, like I think David Hasselhoff or some famous people, there's like a country where they can go and they can have mm. stem cells put in their shoulder and they literally regrow ligaments and they're fine. And they won't do that here. Your body, it's meant to heal itself. Yeah. It's, from anything. But it's, you're right. Like we live in this world where like if they approve it, and there's like a weird thing about like, if it's not FDA approved, it's bad. And it's like, no, it's just not profitable for them. How many pre-workouts have you had that are remember not jacked? FDA approved? You remember jacked? Yeah. They got rid of that quick, dude. That was like the OG. I don't even, to this day, I don't even know what was in that. I used to take that stuff just hanging out of my apartment, dude. Like I wouldn't even work Damn. out. I would just drink it and I just sit there and get all itchy, dude. <laughs> And I was like 20 years it old. It was the I good think. stuff. We, I would take it out before we go out to the desert and those parties. Oh, really? <laughs> Dude, it was, I would just have it and go about my day. I would also use it to work out, but I don't know, for whatever reason, they banned it for a while and then they took a bunch of stuff out. I think they brought it back. I don't know what was in it, to be honest. I don't know either, but whatever it was, it's no longer allowed. But yeah, that stuff would, you could get a workout on that thing, man. Yeah. But crazy. they used to prescribe heroin. It was like, a, have you seen, or again, I keep movie references, man. There's a, you could say it, dude. Will Ferrell and, um, and, uh, uh, the, the Sherlock Holmes movie. It's like a comedy where him and the guy from Talladega Nights are doing a comedy, mm -hmm. but he's a doctor back in the day. And someone's like, I have a headache. And he's like, would you like some heroin? <laughs> like, he's just like prescribing oh. heroin to everyone. And it's funny in the movie, but like that literally was how it started. They it used reminds to me of it. a thousand ways to die in the West. I think it's called. Oh, it's a good one too. Yeah. yeah that's just With hilarious. the family guy, uh, McFarlane or whatever. Name? Yeah. Seth McFarlane, I think is his name. Um, yeah, dude. But yeah, it's like, that's crazy. That's like the world. A lot of these things started off. Uh, fentanyl is, is prescribed as the number one thing people overdose on now. And so it's like 10 times more powerful than heroin, which people already die on. And it, the, like those things were FDA fentanyl is and heroin at one point was, and you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, there's no logic behind a lot of these things. Yeah. I it's think more people, like test, you know, they, Oh, let's do this. Oh, it didn't oh, bring it back. Yeah. Let's, let's mix it. Well, also if it's profitable, they'll, they'll sugarcoat it and blanket it with stuff. Right. And pharmaceuticals uh, have proven that there's a ton of good documentaries on that. The amount of pharmaceutical abuse is crazy, especially in this country. And it's the one thing they don't even need to import. They can just do it all yeah, right here. That's true. But crazy world we live in, man. Oh, it uh, definitely is though. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, on the last podcast that I did, we were talking about technology. I was talking about how I'm nervous about how I might ruin people. But my guest, Daniel, that was on, um, which is my brother-in-law made a good point. He said, we kind of adapt. Like, I feel like we overhype, like how much technology is going to ruin these kids, but like, it's because 
we're so worried about it that we probably will have limits on the way we do, or we'll be more aware of how much like we consume and stuff like that. I don't know about ruin, but I was actually talking to somebody about this last night. We we're talking about that. It was my cousin. I was hanging out. Mm-hmm. We we're talking about the old days. We're outside in the mud, just playing, hanging out. And my little, little cousins now they're like 15 iPads. I bet they, they are in their room the yeah. whole time. So he's looking after uh, my other cousin. She mm-hmm. went, I think she went to Vegas or something. So she's taking care of the daughters, but the girls don't come out. They're in the room on their phone or computer, come out to eat, whatever they right made, back in there. and they go right back. It can't and it's be just good. like, that's, and it's crazy because they will never know how it feels to grow up how we did, but it's just a different generation, man. Yeah. That's again, that goes back to what we we're talking about earlier. Like, how do you teach a kid? Like if all the other kids have iPads, like I want my kid to have an iPad too, but God, and then you restrict them to an hour and they think you're the, you're the, you're the shitty dad. All the other yeah. dads let them have the iPads the whole time. So it's like a weird balance. Like, how do you even like manage that? We'll have to figure that out when that happens though. I think so, man. Cause I don't, I don't know what, what, 10, five years maybe. Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> the rate it's going. I can <laughs> see, have you seen ready player one? Yeah. I can see that being some version of that being a world we live in where people stay at home and Shit, live in a world that's like happening that. now. It's starting. Man. Have you seen the metaverse, the metaverse guys? Bro? Did you see the guy that lives in the baby pen? No, he lives in the metaverse. He's like one of the first users. He has his goggles on and his hand things and he rearranged furniture in his house to fit his virtual reality home. So it shows his goggles and he lives like in a mansion and he has like this, uh, like giant, like playboy bed, like that some hustler would have, but it's him in a room he made. And like his playboy bed in real life is like a baby pen that he removed the things on and like made it wide. So he's literally just like laying down in a pen, but in his head, he's like in this baller mansion. Have you been in there? No. So my friend has one. No. His VR goggles. They, they look but trippy. He let me use it. He, I was in the living room. You know, it, it actually shows the boundaries so you won't fuck up. Fall I, out. Yeah. The stupid videos you see on TV or whatever. <laughs> Idiots. So what I did, um, he said, go on Netflix, watch a movie. I was like, ah, it's weird, dude. I said, fuck it, let's do it. Wait, watch it like on the thing? Yeah. So oh, I put Jesus. on the goggles. I sat on the couch. You had a nice little couch, but in the virtual reality, I made it look like a cool couch. I had a fireplace. The windows open with snow. I was up in the mountains and I sat down. I had a 75 inch screen TV and I was just like, this is stupid. So you're watching Netflix on a TV in the virtual reality. Yeah. Dude, that is wild. It was. How did it feel though? I wanted, I wanted to stay. <laughs> so it makes sense where that guy lives in the pen, huh? Bro, I was. That's scary. Because it was a nice room. I want to say. It's like uh, the, your kitchen area. It's mm-hmm. like twice as big. Okay. And the couch was just in the middle. Fireplace. And like I said, the windows were open and I was in the fucking mountains with snow falling. So the real room is just an empty room. Yeah. I was in his living room. It wasn't empty. It was his living room. He has a kid. So but it's toys everywhere. you just kind of added a window with snow. Yeah. And you added the fireplace. Yeah. And it was snowing up in the mountains. And then I was there. Fireplace with a crackling fucking sound. That's crazy. And bro, dude. you couldn't feel the heat, but still. And then the fucking TV, and I just, I don't know, man. It was kind of nice, but it's weird. I can see that, like, taking, how long do you think it is yeah. before that's porn? Like you It's can, already there, dude. Do they have that already? Yeah. Where they could, you could just put on goggles and, like, you're part of it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they have everything now. God, man. The one I did like, though, is uh, you draw in 3D space. So I put on the goggles, and you get, like, a controller. Uh-huh. And you just throw, draw in 3D space. That's pretty, well, that's good if you're a good drawer. I think I'd be terrible at it. Just do whatever. It was fun. but Or yeah, rave. Dude. Like, what if some dudes took Molly and, like, raved? Oh, that'd be crazy. Dude. Like, at a EDM concert, but they, they created in their if room. That doesn't exist. Nobody take that. <laughs> Don't be millionaires, dude. dude. That'd be wild. I can see that. Because people usually, like, that do that will be at a house somewhere, and they'll just talk about all the raves they've been to. Like, in the future or sometime soon, I bet you can just, cre- like, put Tiesto on, add some crazy dude, lights, turn sure the drawing thing it. into, like, like glowing and then just do your own dude. I bet there's some money you there. Sure you could do it. Damn so it. I've been using the unreal engine five. That's the, the matrix engine. has it right. Yeah. That's what the, the matrix was uh, built on. So I only, I only, is it for a bunch of games? Oh, it's an, it's an engine. I so, only played the matrix one and the, that was the way they promoted it. They're like, this is the new unreal engine, whatever. Oh, cool. Yeah. So that's no, the only version of it I've seen. So what is you, the engine then? What so is the it? engine can, I don't know like too much about it, but mm. so I've been using it for VFX and movies in my okay. own short films. So you literally, so you can make video games. I already made a shooting game and I made an adventure game Mm -hmm. and it looks fucking legit because the engine is beautiful, dude. I'll have to show you after this, like all the shit I've done, but you can put on the VR, you can make whatever you want. That's wild, man. It's amazing. And the cool thing is you can plug it into my camera onto a green screen Uh 
And when it's shooting on the green screen, you see yourself in your world. Like on the camera? On your PC. Oh, Jesus. It's so sick. Yeah, this, this, the, the technology they have is wild, man. Our future is, is going to be uh, crazy. Once they start mastering, because visually that's already there, once they can start mastering like sensories, like once they start putting pads on you and you can feel Bro, like the heat of that fire. Already. Like that's, they're doing that too? There's already a oh, suit. Oh, Jesus There's already Christ. a suit. has pressure points everywhere. Really? And they even have, remember in uh, Ready Player One, that omnidirectional. Chair. Um, the treadmill. Oh, they would all run. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. They have that. Really? Yeah, bro. God damn it. There's dude. some places, I think, Colorado. There's a place where you get onto your VR mm-hmm. with your omnidirectional uh, treadmill, and then you're in, the, you're in a game. And they also have another one. It's all virtual again, but you walk through their warehouse. But in there, it's actual game and stuff. I got to do it. I that was shooting wild, aliens, man. like hiding on the walls. And it's all there because. Yeah, it's, you feel it. It's yeah. all there. That is wild, man. It's pretty amazing, dude. But it's crazy. This fucking metaverse. NFTs, dude. Yeah. See, those. I, I need to catch up on those things, man. I'm not even. I, I think, uh, yeah, we're definitely going to a weird place with all this virtual reality stuff. But every time I see a new video, I'm like, wait, what? Like, that's a thing already? I don't think people know exactly how advanced we are. Because I, I don't. When I see these videos, I'm like, there's no way that's a thing. And apparently it's been a thing for a long time. They just started like commercializing it, like putting commercials on it. I don't know. That blows my mind. It's a lot, dude. We're getting old. That's what it is. That's what bro. it is. We're old men. Uh, all right, man. We hit an hour and 11 minutes, my guy. Did it feel that long? It did not. It did not I feel like we can go for like three. Probably. <laughs> I have to keep them short now because I'm not like Joe Rogan, these popular guys. They can just talk forever. People watch it, but YouTube won't promote it the same if it's too long. Uh, plus the editing gets really hard. No, but of course. Yeah. I appreciate you coming down, man. I appreciate you talking to me. Let's do this again sometime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Vias, my guy. We'll do some more stories next time. We're out. Yes, for sure.